representative of Madrid, Carlos Santos, that is preparing himself for the Sensei exam, and with the help of Shilushi uh, Luis Serrano Sana and Presidio Shilu Rebecca Roca, I'd like to actually interview you, Carlos Santos, about some very interesting techniques that you've been seeing with some very uh, important historic, historical aspects. Uh, can you explain us a bit more about yeah. those Thank you, techniques that you're seeing? Uh, well, the techniques we're going to explain today are about jujutsu. Usually we think about jujutsu like hand to hand combat. But the oldest, the most classical forms of jujutsu actually were developed by samurai who were holding a weapon, a katana, and they were avoiding the, the attacker to take it. So the, the first forms of jujutsu were developed for that purpose. The particular technique we're going to explain today is called origine. Uh, ori come from for to break, to fracture, to bend, and you meant for folding or locking. So it's kind of fracturing while locking, but actually uh, stopping the, the opponent. These techniques were not for the open battlefield, were actually for indoor practices where different ceremonies or official meetings were, were held. Uh, usually, most people were thinking that, well, if it's indoor, and it's it's a a house, in a ceremony, why this person is going to hold a cat in it? Because somebody they leave outside. Yeah, yes. it was forbidden to have it, just really small weapon. However, there were several uh, ranks and, se and several levels of trust between the, the army and the shogun or the daimyo that uh, has that particular advantage or that, or that particular permission to actually have a long weapon inside the uh, the danger or inside the ceremony. So I would like to, if with your permission, if you please. Uh, would you like to expand uh, a little bit more about these uh, officers or these uh, trusted uh, positions with the daimyo or shogun, depending on the on the Japanese epoch? Sure. Well, uh, we have to to. You know that uh, these kind of, of meetings, ceremonies, gatherings, we have to make a difference between what is a tea ceremony, that it's a peaceful and relaxed uh, environment that you, you are, and you are, it's impossible to hold any kind of weapon like katana on them, but some kind of uh, meetings, uh, gatherings that uh, the higher governors uh, should have it's uh, they were some people inside these meetings, these gatherings, uh, used to have the katana in them, because they, these, all these people were a person of trust of the daimyo, person of trust of the soguns. Uh, these person were known as uh, hatamoto. Hatamoto it means literally under the banner. It's the people that has more trust, uh, or, or the, the sogun or the potent person has the trust in them. Hatamoto comes from the Sengoku Jidai era, where the Japan was, was surrounded by war, surrounded by betrayals, traditions in on one side to the other. And uh, the daimyo, the, 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 the great names, the big names, uh, were uh, also very suspicious about the people who has around then the people that has more trust that they were close to them they have the permission and they were called hatamoto when uh, Tokugawa Yashu reached the the sogunate it became the sogun from Japan institutionalized this uh, make institution of this name hatamoto before this Sengoku Jidai era, on Kamakura and, uh, and Ashikaga periods of Sogunates, uh, used to have also uh, important people that have access to the Sogun or the, or the bigger names that they were named Gokenin. But these Gokenin were uh, get less level when they are when the Edo period arrived, when the Tokugawa period. Tokugawa Sogunate arrived and they were lesser in rank than the Hatamoto. Then this Hatamoto has direct access to the, to the important people, to the daimyo or to the Sogun, 
and they have permission to have uh, the, weapon. the yeah. weapon hold on the on the obi that when they were dealing they were treating the topics that they need to 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 decide then this was the origins of these uh, techniques of all those techniques that you are explaining today here thank you so much Josh. Uh, and now uh, with the help of our sensei sure. rebecca please um, can, can you help us to, to, to show a little yes. bit about the, the, these techniques? It would okay. be great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. So, you will see that uh, now Shio Luis is going to, to be our Hatamoto. He was inside, maybe in a ceremony, and he's holding, he ha actually having the weapon or and on his hip. Now, Rosidor Rebecca is going to try to take his sword and also avoid him to, to do that. Then, if you will see, the shoulder of Josh Luis is blocking her neck, and also you will see around here that this hand is going to start to, to take the other hand and is going to uh, take the cervical line and it will, will start to, to hold. Okay? Now, you will see now that the cervical line is completely taken and also this hand is, is not letting the shoulder to rotate. Also, you will see, and this is very important, the hip of Shio Swiss does not allow uh, Rebecca Sen's hand to go out, so actually he can make a strong leverage on his cervical line. Now he will use his whole weight and all his weight is going to go through his hair neck and also her shoulder, so she's going to be completely uh, stopped, like Jimé, and also all in the, as she's in his, in her frontal plane, between this line, all his weight is going to be, and she's going to be completely restrained for that, so she cannot do anything else, because all her upper part is completely stopped. Thank you, Shidosh. And, and now, let's try to do something similar, but instead of trying to go in to, to take the sword, she will try to avoid him to draw, and also she will try to take his hip and hold his leg, and he will avoid that using her body against her, and also using his leg to avoid the grappling of, uh, of the attacker. She will try to take her hand, now he will avoid to take his hip and to take that. And also you will see that his shoulder is also avoiding her to exert the force because now her neck is completely rotated. So she cannot exert power using these muscles. Now he's just crossing his arm and will start the shocking taking his hand. Now he's going to rotate. Now he will arrange the shokin with a more powerful grip and when he already have all the, the, the show completely restrained he will turn again and he will exert all his weight against this muscle on, his, on her cervical and she will be completely constrained using this thing. You will see also here that he's also taking his own arm and he's exerting a lot of leverage against her. She will not be able to move. Now he will release his hand and she, he will take her arm here. All her scapula is going to be restrained. Remember that all his weight is here. At this point, after the, the shooting, when she was uh, looking up, he will complete, she will completely pass out. So, he's, uh, so she's not going to be able to move anymore because she will pass out. And now he will take the arm and he will take a leverage that will go completely against the acromion. So. Uh, that will be a uh, final constraint against the opponent. Thank you so much, Josh. Thanks to you. Thank you, Thank you so much. for and Luisa for explanation. Oh, and well, more historical and anthropological.